Hello, my name is Aya, and today I'll be presenting to you my parametric design final project. So the project at hand uh, is uh, Toyo Ito's Grin Grin Park. And a brief introduction about the project is that it's located in Fukuoka, Japan, and built in 2005 in the artificial island called Island City Central Park. So as you can see here from the image, you can see the form, its organic form of the building and its roof conditions. And here are the plans and the elevation to further analyze the structure. And lastly, some interesting aspects, which are the skylight dome panels and the roof railway slash walkway that goes along the roof. All right, now moving on to Grasshopper and Rhino. The first step I took was to outline the roof structure from the floor plan to create these three different curves. And then I came to Grasshopper and referenced them here. Now to uh, further explain the steps, I'll be using one of the building forms as an example, uh, since the steps repeat in the creation of the two other buildings. So after referencing the curves to create, uh, to create the wave-like form of the roof, I divided the curve here uh, and used the addition and multiplication batteries to shift the points randomly in the Z direction so that they would create this uh, wave-like um, form that is present within the building and it's randomly generated. So then I connected the points into this nerves curve and created basically the bottom part of the roof structure. So um, to create the top portion, which is the hole on top, I moved the curve and scaled it, as you can see. So after creating these two curves, I lofted them together, as you can see here, to create this uh, top roof structure. And going back to the whole parameters, you can see more clearly that moving them can generate different forms, different heights. And uh, also, I'd like to note the parameters in the beginning here. Uh, one can play along with them to alter the form and the conditions of the roof. So as you can see here, if we can change the divisions and uh, which kind of rotates it. And you can play along with the entrance height, creating a more dramatic effect. And yeah. So after uh, creating these uh, lofted surfaces, I then created these uh, meshes. And then to further enhance the meshes, I used the, the Weaver Bird uh, Catmo Clark battery to smoothen it, and then I thickened it and smoothed it again, so it would mimic the condition uh, in the real building. Now after creating these uh, roof structures, I went ahead and started producing the rails that are present on the roof. So my first step was to reference the holes curves and the meshes that, and start offsetting these uh, curves. So these are the curves, and I started offsetting them. After that, I divide uh, the curves and start projecting it on the mesh over here to uh, create uh, the, a curve that flows along the mesh perfectly, basically. And uh, next, to create the top part of the rail, I moved the bottom part, these uh, nerves. I moved their points a certain Z direction, which can be controlled in the parameters, and uh, created these nerves. And uh, with those points and the bottom points, I was able to join them uh, using the line battery. And so joining the nerves and the lines together, I piped, I piped it to create this final form. And you can see here, it mimics the exact same condition in each building according to its uh, mesh surface condition. And again, this entire relationship here is parametric through the parameters here I have. Um, so we can alter the distance from the dome for the, uh, the rails. And we can also adjust the number of rails within the structures. It's kind of slow, but you can see that. And also the rail width, as you can see here. 
can be altered and its height and its radius of the pipes. Now moving on to the third part, which is generating the inner building. I started off by referencing the building's curve, the original curve, and offsetting it slightly so that it would be a bit smaller, be located in the inside. And then I divided the curve to simplify the control points and then created a curve from that. I then used this curve that I created and projected it on the surface so that would create a perfect top condition. And then projected it again on the ground and lofted these two curves together to create the basic shape of the building. And you can see here, these are the three buildings generated. So after creating these lofted surfaces, I went ahead and created a mesh and then used the Catmull Clark battery once again to smoothen it out and then thickened it as well. And then to further enhance the design, I wanted to add the window frames that were present in the pictures. So I used this mesh here and I used uh, Weaverbird's a picture frame battery to generate the, uh, the frames themselves and thicken them too. And these, these uh, can be controlled here by the mesh UV. So controlling these can alter the amount of frames and how they're situated, as you can see here. So you can alter the V count and it will change the look. Now the last part consists of creating the roof glass domes using Kangaroo. So first I once again referenced the, uh, the whole curves uh, from each building and then I patched each curve, so you can see here. We patched it and then I uh, created a mesh UV from the surface and then cleaned it. And after cleaning it, I plugged in the mesh into the Naked Vertices battery and used the clothes point to generate the load. And uh, the Naked points on the on-curve battery so that the uh, points would be situated along the curves from the holes that we referenced earlier. And the mesh is also plugged into the edge lengths uh, battery so it can uh, kind of change, alter its physics and the way it acts, basically. And then joining all these batteries together in the Intwine battery, I plug them into the bouncy solver. And you can see here, the domes are generated along the, uh, the curves of the holes. And now to uh, kind of experiment with the domes themselves, one can go to the parameters located here. And uh, I basically separated each dome's parameter so that each one can act as its own like form, so it can create like interesting and unique shapes. Lastly, I uh, used the result of the kangaroo battery uh, to uh, use this result and smoothened it using the uh, blur battery to create the essential uh, surface of the dome. And then I used, again, the Weaverbird picture frame battery to generate the frames located on the dome and thickened it as well to create this uh, final form. So this basically concludes all the steps I took to generate this building, ending up with this final result, or can be seen better here in the baked model. So we can see the panels, the top roof conditions, the rails, and the dome with its panels. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.